So the adapter plate arrived for the uh, KL V6, so I bolt, got that bolted up and the flywheel on. Um, I went to go together nice and easy with the spacer. Um, managed to get the gearbox bolted on. A um, few little adjustments needed, but otherwise it was fine. So the next job was to uh, cut the hole for the starter motor on the left hand side of the gearbox, which meant cutting away part of the um, bell housing. Uh, we had to keep marking that until we could get good clearance on the starter. So it meant taking a fair amount out of the bell housing uh, until finally it would clear. Um, it's all pretty tight there, so as you can see we managed to get it on. Um, and, uh, it fits up pretty good. A um, bit of an issue with the clearance of the bolts on the flywheel, but uh, we'll get around that. And uh, you can see it from above with the gearbox. A few little minor adjustments, as I say, had to be made. So next up we put the engine gearbox back in the car and it was fairly obvious that the starter motor was going to interfere with the passenger footwell or the bulkhead onto the footwell so we need to cut some out of that so um, we marked it up uh, it's just a thin piece of sheet steel that's wrapped around the chassis so we cut that away until we had enough clearance for the starter and it fits in okay obviously uh, the height of the engine uh, then was going to determine if we could clear the chassis rail uh, luckily, it just cleared. Uh, we had to raise the gearbox a little bit, but uh, it fits in okay. Once we had the uh, engine at the height we thought, I uh, thought it would be best to uh, test fit the bonnet and the nose cone again. So you can see now with the nose cone on, it's all pretty tight, but uh, there's plenty of clearance. Uh, seems to be enough, hopefully, with the throttle bodies as well. Um, and here's a shot with the uh, the nose and the bonnet on, they're all bolted up okay, nothing's touching anywhere. So. With the engine height determined, that meant I could start looking at making engine mounts. So I was going to chop up the old roll bar I used to have, which was about two and a quarter inch, quite a thick walled roll bar. Um, and I decided to make them with a, a notch tube um, onto a vertical piece of tube, onto a plate. Uh, so this is the component parts cut up here. With a plate for the engine to bolt onto these spare uh, yeah, bolt holes in the side of the block. And there's everything badly tacked together. <laughs> welding might get better as I get on so I made one for each side um, using Land Rover um, engine rubbers uh, bolted to some 5mm plate that will get uh, welded onto the chassis uh, got it all welded up um, which I'm reasonably happy with still learning a bit with the welder but it's nice and thick metal so I managed to get uh, decent penetration onto it and that meant we could get them bolted in the car with a few adjustments uh, but everything worked out okay um, obviously as you can see there the plate needs trimming down and then uh, they'll need welding in finally but they clear everything um, and they look pretty solid so it should be okay so we can finally get the engine in position and uh, I can start looking at ride height with the standard sump uh, we always assume we're going to have to cut the sump uh, we may still have to. The, the ride height, the way it's sitting now, is about 90-95 millimetres, but I expect it to settle a bit on the suspension, so we'll have to wait and see if that's enough to give us enough clearance. With the engine height determined and in position, I decided I'd have a look at the uh, exhaust. So I ordered from eBay uh, a set of standard uh, stainless manifolds for a Ford Probe. I knew they weren't going to fit, but it gave me the... Uh, correct flange for the engine plus the three into one collector and the quality of them seem quite good they're a mild steel flange but they're nice and flat the one and five eighths tube uh, as you can see we one bolted on the engine there it was always going to be too long and in the wrong position you can see the engine mount plate there uh, and they were going to foul on the chassis and on the driver's side um, it was never going to clear the steering column which was always going to be in the way so that one was definitely going to have to be extended and hacked around so to, to make it simple for myself, uh, here's a little test fit and you can see where it shows how far off it was going to be and uh, they look nice and shiny but I always knew that I was going to have to cut them, cut them up. They both came with lambda sensor um, parts on them as well which is good and you can see there how little clearance there was down to the chassis. So first job we did the, uh, the near side one, started cutting it up. Um, trying to reuse as much of the existing tube as possible, cut the collector off at uh, the most convenient heights to be able to weld it back together and then basically it was a case of a jigsaw puzzle to build up a manifold to turn the tube towards the rear of the car so that we could uh, get the flange somewhere 
where we could then turn a 90 out through the side of the vehicle so uh, it worked out alright uh, taped everything together then once I was happy with it tacked it together with a MIG and uh, some stainless wire again pretty horrendous welding going on here and then uh, eventually welded it all together uh, hopefully it's gas tight um, and it's in a nice position it gives me plenty of room to get out through the side of the car the driver's side manifold was always going to be harder so it was, uh, because of the steering column being in the way so started by cutting off the tubes almost at the flange basically with just an inch or two there with one bend left in it um, and then tried to work out how to get it it's pretty tight on that side you've got the brake master cylinder etc so I started building it up again a bit of a jigsaw puzzle a few gaps which were difficult to weld as well so I seem starting to get it together now here with the collector um, clearing the co steering column trying to clear the brake master cylinder as well and again quite close to the chassis on the side started tacking it together blew a few holes in this one because the tube is pretty thin uh, and eventually got it welded up again not the prettiest of things but it seems to work it's pretty close to the column pretty close to the side of the car and pretty close to the master cylinder as well but hopefully it's okay so we bit the boat and uh, cut a hole in the fiberglass this one's on the driver's side um, and the flange was quite close so it's quite a tight bend to get the 90 degree bend out from that flange and, and out through the hole it's going to need a bit of uh, protection from the heat I think this one uh, cut down a, um, a sleeved expanded joint there to uh, then put another 90 on the outside of the car to reverse the, the pipe down the side and I bought some nice silencers uh, to go uh, on both sides obviously um, had to put a little kink in there just to let an extra step just to to get an extra bit of angle to, to line up with the silencers at the rear but it worked out pretty well quite happy with it um, I got uh, a good welder I know to TIG weld on a 90 onto the silencer uh, to give a nice finish and um, he's also now TIG welded all these tubes together for me um, I did start on the also done the uh, the near side one as well, which was slightly easier because the flange was further away from the bodywork, so a bit easier to get out. Again, put the little kink in it uh, so it matches the other side to straighten the the tube up to meet the silencer. Got them TIG welded up and had to go up polishing them with a, a polishing uh, mop on uh, my angle grinder on my bench grinder, I should say. So then I moved on, did a bit of uh, plumbing. Uh, with some silicon tube uh, or silicon pipe and hose and uh, some uh, aluminium 32mm tube just working out different routes down the side of the engine to the, the water uh, thermostat housing at the back and uh, from the outlets on the radiator uh, but ok I started, decided to make a cover to cover the old uh, exhaust manifold hole in the near side of the car so I cut a piece, made a template, cut a piece of aluminium to cover it, uh, drilled some holes and riveted on eventually and uh, primed it up. So all in all things are coming on, uh, hopefully I can get it back on the road and start using it again. It's been a while since I took this picture and uh, it would be nice to get back behind the wheel. So see you next time.